was just I was just trying to let you know it's good for a minute. I didn't know what the hell he said. I forget what somebody said. I was going to do that. 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 I was well, let's get going. Whoever wants to see, I guess, let's uh, start in. Oh, man, look at that. I've got two uh, future green teal hens in here. They've been sitting with uh, primer and one coat of brown on it for uh, quite a while. Haven't gotten to them yet. One is solid. This one's solid. This one's hollow. And this is Tom's Tom style. Uh, I'm not actually going to weight these down, but I just thought I'd show some of the people might not have. Uh, you see how things float. For hunting, I do actually like solid decoys better than hollow. Hmm. As long as you don't have to carry them for miles. But, uh, they just ride the waves better than hollow ones. <coughs> Uh, to get going, this is a hollow uh, hooded hooded hen, going to be someday. And uh, I like to use, now Tom showed this to a, a group of us when he had his class in his basement. I like to use a clear tub. I don't remember if Tom had a clear tub or not. That seems to float pretty even. So when you got a clear tub, you can look through it and see how it looks. Uh, so you don't have to weight it one side or the other. Uh, these hooded like that, they usually float with their tail right on top of the water like that. So we will get some weight on it and bring it down. And this just happens to be a, uh, this is red cedar. I've got one coat of uh, clear poly spar varnish on it and uh, a lot of room for weight, which it won't need that much, but it is pretty deep. Uh, this, I have to make it so it will roll over. You sit that on its back and it should roll over, and that one doesn't, it's the way it sets. It doesn't actually take a whole lot to change that, but the way Tom showed us, we, uh, you put some lead weight in the bottom of it. It's just shot? This is just lead shot. Even it out. We'll put that on top like that. We'll get it centered uh, and use rubber bands. And that 
it's still almost like I haven't put anything in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good the church wouldn't like that. Got the whole thing here. Some little kids got yes. that lead for you. Well, so. See what what does? Mm -hmm. Put it all away? Yeah. Fill it up? Yeah, let's just see how much difference it makes. Yeah. You want to speed it up here, Sam? No. <laughs> Down just a little bit, we wouldn't have that much there. Indeed, you could have left all the wood in it by the mind. Glad you had it. <laughs> there it is. There you go. Now roll it over, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> that is a real even right where it is. Wait for some incoming ducks. Can you get a shot through the side? So it's quite. Phil, does that tail? You want that tail riding like that because that's the way it is out. In this nature? is a diving bird. They dive for fish and whatnot, and their tail is usually sitting flat on top <coughs> of the water like that. Okay. Yeah. Now, diving ducks, puddle ducks like these, will be sticking up. <coughs> yeah, one thing you can do. Go ahead. Take a pencil or something and measure around like an inch up on the side. Just have something so it's constant. So if, you, if you're assuming your bird is <coughs> done flat, measure up the size. Then when you put it in the water, you got something to look at against the water line. Mm. And if it's got to make a slight change, you can do that. You'll, yeah. see, you'll see that. Yeah. <coughs> and I've made enough now where I can I can tell where a so this is a solid bird. This is going to float deeper than a hollow bird. Uh, and like Don said, he wanted that like a swimming mode, and he wanted it riding real low. You know, this one's almost this one's going to be feeding almost when it when it gets set up. Uh, floating birds tend to ride higher. But uh, you can just kind of tell, uh, I guess I've got, you want to try and get your water line, your, uh, your split in your wood, you want to keep that above the water line a little bit. And I might not have done that on this one, but um, that would be normal. You want to keep your split on your bird, your glue line above the water line, and a hollow bird will float higher than a solid bird. that much weight to get it to roll over. This one is hollow and it's extremely hollow. Thank you. And But that one is sitting just about right. <clears throat> so now you've got it set. What I would do is uh, I use an ice pick. And I'll go in through my screw hole and I'll put a mark on the bottom of that in both spots so I know where the screw holes have to go. And then I'll pre-drill a hole. Um, this is hollow. I've got an oak keel mounted on the inside of the cedar. Uh, that is all shaved down and I put this oak, you know, being extremely hard, 
the screws will hold into that real good and don't have any problem. So is that all you're using, just the screws? Yeah. And it adhesive I don't use any adhesive, but what I do after I fill it with weight and got it all weighted, I will fill any remaining space with caulking. And I fill, I make space on top of these screw holes to put caulking in that screw hole. Most of my decoys might be floated, uh, they might go in the water, and I might be hunting with them. Um, so I actually, I do seal all the holes. And it's just cheap white silicone caulking. Uh, from this point, <laughs> someone's phone. Uh, Tom, is Tom here? No, we no, no, no. Tom, okay. He would, uh, the way you showed us at least, he would take uh, epoxy and he would fill that with epoxy to make sure all that lead weight stays in there. <clears throat> and I've done that, but I wasn't going to mix any here tonight and do that or anything like that. But I do, I shoot caulking on top of that, I seal it over real good and get it mounted and everything in the bottom is, is sealed. Nothing's going to get into it, nothing's going to come out of it. Uh, the screw holes into the bird are sealed. Say, so Phil, your screw holes are the same holes as the lead shot? Yep, here, let me pass that around. Yeah. Oh, you're nice. Okay. Yep. Okay. yep, don't dump it. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> but you can see I've got that gouged out. So there's room to put some caulking in there, top and bottom. And I will actually uh, put caulking, not caulking, I'll put uh, epoxy on the screw and then screw that up in there through the epoxy. Uh, Anyone else need to see that? Uh, now we'll, uh, if no one's ever done it, uh, we'll show how to, uh, I believe Tom showed us this too. Uh, how to float a bird on top of saran wrap in a tank. So they, so they don't get wet through there in the water? That is so the wood doesn't get wet, yeah. You've got to tear that tail. I've got a uh, hollowed out bird that I'm going to be uh, gluing the bottom piece on. And I usually try and balance them before I glue that on there. So I'll just show one way how that can be done. And this is the strangest setup. You gotta, you gotta tear that tab off. And it doesn't even have a cutter on that one. Yeah, there it is. It's gonna reveal. No, it doesn't. Look at the ink. Um, this was inherited from my mother-in-law who died. Which you always spoke so highly of me. Yes. Oh, here it is. Don't you know? They don't grab it. They just set it on top of the water. I'm going to put another one on just for fun. There it is. Maybe you can tell I've got an eye appointment in the morning. <laughs> and this is a hollowed out bird with a oak keel epoxy in. And that'll just help keep it from getting wet, that wood. You cut that wood thin down to what? Great so inch. That one is pretty thin, that one. And that one is leaning a little bit to the left there. Use that in a duck boat type, so that it gets broke. Wasn't it? No. So that one's got to come to the side here. Which is this side. And what I would do is. I 
I'm going to be, I just cut off a chunk of lead uh, tire wheel weight. And I'm going to put it on the side here. I'll epoxy that in one, once I get her all set. That saran wrap, it isn't a perfect setup for this, but it does work. always be heavy in the back because your line's tight in the front. But I try and make them level anyway. <laughs> so much for my Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Epoxy the weights in the front, or wherever you got to have them, you'd epoxy them in. And uh, I will glue this board in, and I would put it on a belt sander and sand her down nice and level, and uh, finish. How did you get that cut out? How did you stop? Explain how you. How all of that did you have to the bottom of it? Yeah, you'll have your bottom. Yeah. And what you want to do is. Uh, Oh, I cut this way out. Cut this out before you glue this together. No, what glue what together? I mean, you got two pieces. Two no, pieces no, no, no. That's one piece. piece. Okay. That's all one piece. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so then I just uh, you put a border around the bottom, and I would make an inch. Mm -hmm. Now this is a smaller, different style bird than I would normally make, but uh, you would make about an inch around all the way around the outside. Take a Forstner bit and drill down inside of that as far as you can get. Okay. And then you've got to grind out the whole inside of that. But how do you save this piece? This piece is later. Once you got it all hollowed out, then you've got to actually you take a different bit and you know, 45 your edge. And so once you've got it to that point, then you can make a pattern of that size right here. You put it on your board. And then you've got a 45 that, and then you got to kind of custom fit it to see if you get it in there to fit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You got the other You got the other I don't know. I, they were probably hollow. Hard, 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 hard. Yes, I don't think he uh, made hollow any noise, but I just felt like hollowing it. Yeah. 
uh, again, I glued an old peel on the inside, epoxy on the inside, and I would like epoxy that right into the board. Just for Marine, uh, just Marine, uh, it's okay. from Woodcraft, Pink 3 or uh, West. You can use 5 minute epoxy on something like this. But I got, yeah, <coughs> yeah, that kind I'm talking about there, that one sets up in a day. But yeah, you could use uh, five minutes, and, but then you got to work really quick. Hmm. Within five minutes? Within five minutes, yeah. Just as Is it? Phil? Uh, I heard somewhere, and I don't remember where, that. <coughs> The longer curing epoxy is, gets more waterproof as the time goes on. So like a 20 minute or 30 minute would be more waterproof than five minutes. More minute. waterproof, yeah. yeah, more than likely. And again, I would usually use this stuff that sets up in a day. Hmm. It's a marine. Is that the west? It's west. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. And uh, certain things I use uh, five minute and uh, certain things I use 10, 20 minutes. And Whatever I need time to play with. Uh, any questions? Oh, uh, the bill. We wanted to do the bill here. Now that everyone left. Uh, this is an oak doll that I had soaking all day. And what you want to do is just make a. Uh, now, this is for the curlew that I made, and it had an eight inch long bill. And you just make a pattern on a board of the curve of the bill that you want. Actually, that's what I did. And what you don't want to do is that. Hey guys. You need to, uh, you need to make a little bit steeper curve. They don't even care. You make a steeper curve on your pattern than the bill that you want because it's gonna spring back. And so, like I say, I made it to the exact pattern and I took it off and it just kind of sprung straight almost. It was just had a little bend to it. Mm -hmm. So I ended up, you've got to put it in there, clamp it in, and I ended up putting wedges and shims in there to get a little more bend out of it. And uh, you, what you want to do is actually you got to check your grain to make sure it's going the right way. You want your, pat, your pattern grain to uh, <clears throat> How do I want to say it? Uh, you want it going vertical, I guess, not horizontal. Like that. Turn that up, will you? What you want to This is a, just a jig that I made for the bill. Would you want your grain going horizontal with the length of the bill? Uh, you want it, well, with this bill, you want it going side to side. And that side to side is going to be laying vertical on here. Uh, and it ended up my bill broke at the from bending it. Anyway, this one's been soaking all day. Looks dry. I don't have a steamer, so. Uh, <clears throat> and what kind of wood is that again? What's that? The type of wood. Uh, this is an oak doll that I used oh, on the okay. crew. And it looks like I didn't bring the right clamps. None of them are big enough. Mm. Uh, but you just clamp it to your jig and let it dry for uh, multiple days. The longer, the better. Will it bend now if you could do it? Yeah, that is I brought the wrong clamps. I'm sorry, guys. But you would clamp that in there. I used four clamps, one on each end, and I brought it in slowly in the middle, two in the middle. And uh, you let it dry that way for many days. Phil, when you say slowly, do you mean that you take five minutes to do it or that you take five days? For drying? To no, clamp it. Oh, to clamp it. No, no, you can, uh, five minutes, that don't make any difference. Okay. What, yeah? I I'm sorry, I didn't bring the right clamps. But yeah, you would clamp that in there and just let it set. These are drying 
dolls for uh, when I had, I'd stick birds on there on a doll. Actually, crows. I had crows sitting on them, drying from the paint. Um, you use that technique like on a tail of a pintail or, or old squaw? You cer certainly could, yeah, if you wanted to make it out of wood and bend it. <clears throat> Couldn't you take a flat piece of oak, though? What's that? And just this draw the curve in it, bam. This is a half-inch oak doll that I used for the uh, for building. It. Um, my bill, it did crack on me a little bit, guys. And what I did was, uh, after it dried on a bend, I soaked it and saturated it in super glue. Multiple coats of super glue. And just let that dry up. And then shaped it down with a file and a grinder in a little bit, and uh, it worked out fantastic. <laughs> that super glue just glued it and sealed it right up. Unbelievable. And hard oak doll, yeah, you're, it's hard to bend. And that'd be for like shorebirds? That is for a shorebird, yeah. I made it, it was an eight inch bill for a curlew. Um, I did bring it here, it was at the last meeting, so, yeah. yeah. So, sorry guys, we didn't get too detailed on anything, but any questions on anything? Thank you. Good show. Good job. Yep. <laughs>